Good evening, everybody. How are you doing this evening? I hope you're doing a good, I hope you have a good weekend, a relaxing weekend, and even some of you may be watching the Super Bowl. And I just hope that whichever team you go for wins. And um, whoever the underdog is, that's pretty much, in this case, what I go for in the Super Bowl. But anyway, I want to share something tonight with you to get right to the point. About the last days, I'm going to read the verses, but in between each verse, I'm going to stop and explain about that verse and what's going on to help you to see that we're living in the last days, but the end is not yet. And I will show you some things here as we go through from... Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 reads, For we are definitely living in the last days. Before Jesus returns to earth, you may be thinking, when did the last days start? The last days started when Jesus came to this earth to live, to die, and to raise again on the third day, and was seen by many people before he went to heaven. And for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his, his witnesses to our people. Acts 13.33 Jesus divided time in half. From B.C. before Christ to A.C. after Christ. So now we live in the last days before Christ's second return. Another name is the church age or the age of grace. With this said, let's get started on this devotional, on this subject. And be coming from Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, which says, Then as he went out of the temple... One of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Mark 13, verses 1 and 2. When did this happen? This event happened in 70 CE, which means Common Era. By the Romans, when they burned down and destroyed the Second Temple, the only thing that remains today is part of the wall on the western side, named the Wailing Wall, that is very sacred to the Jews and to all that go to it and pray. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? Mark 13, verses 3 and 4. Jesus' disciples Ask Jesus when and how the signs of the last days will take place before his return. Today, people are still asking the same question. Yet some people are being deceived into believing a lie because they refuse to believe in the truth. God's word also says that in the last days, God will send out a strong delusion or a strong lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Second Thessalonians 2, verses 10 and 11. 
This is part of God, part of God's judgment on humanity. Because of their unbelief in the truth. Who is the truth? None other than Jesus Christ himself. For he said, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John fourteen six. So he is the truth, the only truth. He was revelant back then, and he's revelant today. We just need to be looking for it. And he always will be revelant. As I'm, as I'm writing this devotional, there are online multimedias showing videos of people saying outlines of Jesus, of angels, and hearing trumpet sounds in the sky. Scripture says this will happen, but each angel and trumpet has a reason or job to do. At the t at that time, and we may look at that, may look more into that later, Lord willing. But for now, let's continue with what Jesus is getting ready to talk about. And Jesus said, answering them, begin to say, "Take heed that no one deceives you." The word "heed" means to take warning, to be watchful, to pay attention to. Jesus warns his disciples and us in the last days, there will be many people who will try to come in his name to try to deceive people, to lead them astray. Jesus goes on to say, For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Mark thirteen six. In a world that is so full of me, 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 I, 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 I. Let's, let's take heed. Let's, I, me, take heed, take warning of what Jesus says. History has shown us in the past of this. Here are two of them. First one that we will look at is Jim Jones, who was a religious leader to a cult that led many people to their graves by drinking Kool-Aid that had poison in it. This cult became known as the Jonestown Cult, and this murder took place on November 18th, 1978. Secondly, second one we're going to look at briefly is the, is the Waco in Waco, Texas. There was this man named David Koresh who thought he was Jesus and led many people to their death as well. When the state, local, and federal agents set the fort on fire and everybody that was inside was killed. This happened in April 19th, 1993. I was a senior in high school, and I was coming up out of the library when this took place. I remember it well. Yet this, too, was predicted in the Bible about the last days. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless... The falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.3 See, we are living in the last days. Jesus is getting ready to come back. I believe he's getting ready to come back. But things have to happen. And some things, as we looked at already, has happened. Scripture has been fulfilled every day, especially today on multimedia. It's so easy to be deceived. I believe these two, Jim Jones and David Koresh, 
were did their part in bringing in that fall away from Jesus, that fall away from church. Though there's many things that cause people to stop going to church. I believe these were just the two had a lasting impact, not just on them that got killed, but on the families as well. But it was predicted that this would happen. Jesus predicted it. We're reading it. We're studying it here today. Paul, the great missionary of his day, of the Christian faith, he predicted it. We'll look into that some too, Lord willing. However, there is more to happen. For Jesus said, But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. These are just the starting, folks. These days of trouble is just starting to bring in, to usher in the last days, to usher in Jesus' return. Mark thirteen seven. Jesus said that there will be wars and rumors of wars. And the world stage has shown us this throughout the world's history of wars. Wars are man-made destruction. Jesus also tells us what to do when this happens. He says, do not be troubled by this. Must happen. Yes, we are living in the last days, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. For nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. And there will be earthquakes in various places. And there will be famines, troubles. Again, Jesus says, these are the beginnings of sorrow. Just as per, just as a pregnant woman, when she gives labor, is in pain, so is this. We are living in the last days. Nation against nation, this is going on right now and before our very eyes. Israel against the Hamas, Russia against the Ukraine, and China against Taiwan, USA against Iran. And so on, and so and so on. So many other countries against each other. Yet there still is more to come, according to Jesus. Natural disasters, earthquakes, in various places, famines, more troubles. But again, like I said, these are just the beginning of sorrow. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. Some believe that when Jesus comes back, there will be peace into the world. And that everything will be calm. But as we learned in this study, that is far from the truth. There won't be any peace in this world when Jesus comes back for his church. Lord willing, we will see this in the next devotional. What we have learned in this study is that these are the beginnings of showing the last days that we live in. Yet the end, again, the end is not yet. In spite of all man, of what man says, no one knows when Jesus is coming back to get the church. For Jesus said himself, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only, Matthew twenty four thirty six, And elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus says, not even I know. Not even the Son of Man knows, referring to himself. But only the Father knows when that will take place. So despite what man says, nobody knows. In spite what man thinks, 
nobody knows. We just need to be ready. I hope you have a great Valentine's Day this week and you get your sweetheart something. And remember, to die is to gain. To live is for Christ Jesus. Have a blessed week. Love you.